Welcome to the show, everybody. This is episode number 268 of the Iron Coop Fights Movies. This episode is available on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, and hosted by SoundCloud. Please check out my graphic novel, The Gold Line and the Tournament of Sentinels. The ebook is only $2.99, link in the description. I'm Kier, your host. With me on the show today are my co-hosts, Emerson. Hey, what's going on? And Everett. Hey, what's up? This week, the team reviews The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. The future of civilization rests in the fate of the One Ring, which has been lost for centuries. Powerful forces are unrelenting in their search for it, but fate has placed it in the hands of a young hobbit named Frodo Baggins, who inherits the ring and steps into legend. A daunting task lies ahead for Frodo when he becomes the ring bearer to destroy the one ring in the fires of Mount Doom where it was forged. I'm going to explain our rating system. On this show, we give the titles that we have watched a rating of win, draw, or loss. A win is a title that we would highly recommend, while a draw is a title we didn't love but recognize others may appreciate. A loss means we do not recommend the title. All right, who wants to go first? I will. So uh, I'm going to give this one a win, and there's a few different reasons for that. Um, This is my least favorite of the trilogy. Uh, I think that it spends a lot of time trying to uh, set up the world and try to introduce you to the characters, and this is also one where the scope is smaller. However, I think that compared to the book, it is able to condense the most important parts of the book down in a fairly coherent story versus the book, which does insane like side uh, ventures and has a lot of stuff that doesn't make it into this that I think was the right decision to cut. Um, I recognize that some people might find it somewhat like, oh, well, they're just going on a quest, but then the quest ends at the end of the book. But this is really setting up all or at the movie. This is really setting up all the stuff that will come through in the second and third movie and they were filming all three of these movies like back to back to back uh in the same year or two i believe so this was very much you know the first uh opening of this larger tale um i like the world i like the uh actors quite a bit i think the cgi is dated but it's not as bad as some of the stuff i've seen um it's not as good as minority reports i don't think but it's close uh so it's a win for me ever yeah, I'm gonna give it a win as well. Um, I think not not just this one, but all three of these films, I think by now are considered to be some of the most iconic fantasy films and books of all time. So, you know, going into that with that in mind, I think this film is pretty fantastic, especially with how old it is. As Emerson sort of mentioned, the CGI is a bit dated, but I don't think that matters very much except for a few scenes, and I'll mention that when we get into spoilers. But this film pretty much ticks all the boxes for me. It's got a great story. It's got great acting. It's got great set and costume and prop design, which I really love about these things. This would be a film that would be a dream come true to work on. If they ever were to make something like this again, it'd be a dream to work on something like that. But I have a lot to say when it comes to spoilers. But yeah, I love this film. I've loved it since I was a kid. Um, so for me, I give it a win. I thought it was pretty good. Um, yes, dude, I had texted Everett while he was talking, be prepared for Kia to wreck us here. I was like, Oh God, no. Well, there, I, I like the story. So I saw this movie when it came out in theaters, I was 11 years old and, um, I don't really like fantasy. I never really have mainly because they're always like fucking elves in the God. forest and all that <laughs> shit. I like war and I like the armor. This film for an 11 year old doesn't have much of either of those things. That's true. It's a lot of like frolicking and like little people and like hiding and crying. And I don't know, just being weird. And then like, I don't know where some like fantasy elf person comes out and says some made up words. And, you know, I, I, it's not I see what you're saying. my I thing. Mm-hmm. I don't love it for that reason. I think that it does a decent job of setting up an, a compelling story. Like when I was a kid, I really did not understand what the fuck they were doing <laughs> to be fair. And I only saw each one of these movies only once and never gave a fuck to go back. I could tell you right now, all I remember is I remember the Nazgul them hiding under the tree for some reason. I remember the battle of Helm's deep. I remember Gimli and Legolas um, like counting their kills and I remember Gandalf like running down a hill in the third one. 
and that Aragorn was like the king's son, which was a big twist, but apparently it was in this movie. I thought it was like in the third movie or something. Um, that's about all I remember. Battle of Helm's Deep, in my mind, was the peak of all of it. Um, I don't know if that's still the case. I like the idea of Frodo having to carry the ring. And, you know, it's a, I like the idea of the journey. I like the idea of the group going together. Um, you know, there are parts of it where I'm like, I don't think they did a great job of explaining it. I think that you need a lot of context for fantasy stories. I agree. And this is where I, Jade was getting annoyed with me because I was trying to ask her questions. Like, there are things I don't understand. And, and to give you one example, S Saruman, which, why is his name just like Sauron? Like, so right. that, yeah. So the, the, so I can actually hopefully answer a lot of these questions. The actual reason is because Tolkien had a fucking hard on for Finnish mythology. And like the Saru noise is just like one, he uses this even more in the books. Like there's multiple characters with this naming convention. <sighs> okay. so, so at some point a decision was made that like, okay, we're only having two. <laughs> okay. So like yeah, at just, one point just as a side note real quick, Emerson, I think you mentioned it in your review, but are you you're the one that I've talked to about you saying this is a rare case where the movies are actually better than the book. I right? think so, yes, because the book to give you a sense, if the like after they leave the Shire, and I want to get to Kia's question, but after they leave the Shire, they like go fuck off in the forest. They meet some ghosts. They meet this like hermit who they spend like a while with. There's like an ocean <laughs> goddess that they like talk to. Okay, uh, I hate all that shit. Yeah. I hate all of that. And so he cut it all out. He was like, okay, they leave the Shire, they go to Bree. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Cause, cause the, I would have gotten off the train for sure if, if they were doing all that shit. Because actually, one of my biggest complaints of the movie is when they run into the second group of elves. In my mind, the movie grinds to a halt. I'm like, I don't know who the fuck these people are. We just met elves. Here's like a, another group of elves. They seem like they have their own issues and like, some other like she starts like i don't know having prophecies and i'm like i hate all of this i don't care about any of this we were we were like on a pace you stopped it again like i know we're headed to something because the movie's got to be almost done it's like three hours in like come on this is stupid does that actually set up something so kind of um the elves you meet there and gladriel she is important in the second movie with like some politics stuff and she's also going to be one of the main characters in their new fucking show they're coming out with okay um and that so doesn't okay sound like it was worth the, it. <laughs> okay so the base the base reason they do that he does this and i agree with you it does grind to a halt because you get moria and then it's like, holy shit! Now I don't even know like, what that is. what's is that a person or a that no the minds of Moria. They 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 emerge from the mountain like it's a okay. pretty cool sequence. And then they're like with elves, so it's like okay. Um, the reason what it what it's trying to show from Tolkien's point of view is that there's all these different kingdoms of elves and they're not really working together, and that like they're all declining. They're all on their way out. They're just like because the like Elrond is saying that like we're leaving. Our time is over. Yeah, I didn't understand. He's like, we're leaving the beaches. I'm like, what? Okay, so we're leaving to the beaches. So basically, uh, um, okay. the whole thing with Tolkien is that like this age is like all the good is fading. Like the magic in the world is starting to disappear and all the like best times are behind them. Even if they like win, like the time of the elves is over and magic is over. And like things are kind of becoming normal essentially like the the magic and luster of the world is fading away and the elves are can the reason they're immortal is because they're connected to like the magic of the world itself and now that the magic is fading they as a people are declining and bit by bit they're like losing themselves so the only way they can maintain their sense of identity and live is by leaving middle earth and sailing away to like a distant land that they think they can live in I mean, that sounds interesting. I don't know that that was, is that going to be explained later? Better? Yes, okay. it'll be, well, and better is a, it's brought up a few times, but what was the initial question you were asking before? Well, it wasn't that? a question. It was an example of like how I don't even understand like how fantasy worlds work mm -hmm. because I remember that there's like some talking trees later on. So then Saruman starts cutting down trees for battle. And I don't know, personally, I'm like, he's like, isn't he like a powerful wizard? It seems kind of beneath him that he's just like, yeah, let's like start chopping down trees. 
But then I was also like, is he doing it for some magical reason? Like, are the trees like powerful beings or something? Like, I, I really don't know. Like, are they just trees? Apparently they were so, just. yeah, so so they're just trees. However, him chopping them down causes problems later on, which is like the thematic element. The second element is like he is powerful, but and this isn't explained super well either, but it'll be touched on a bit in the second movie. Him betraying the cause nerfs him because he gets his power from like God in Lord of the Rings. And by betraying the cause, he's weakened. And so he needs to be like building up his army of Urukai. Or he's not going to be as, like, powerful on his own. Okay. So, like, my point is, like, I don't understand how the world works necessarily. That's fair. My impression of uh, every fantasy story ever is basically, let's get, like, your hero, your vanilla-faced hero. And um, let's get the elves who are uh, maybe a little highbrow, like, a little uppity, a little too arrogant. And uh, let's have them say some made up shit and uh, wear some shiny clothing and uh, let's get some dwarves and uh, let's have them be either underground or in a mountain. And um, maybe they could have some brash personalities that, that would be like a unique way to go. And uh... <laughs> but you have to understand Tolkien like invented that trope. You're right. Okay. But he's the one who right. like created it. <laughs> so that that's like my impression. So I, I'm seeing all this shit is like, this all seems the same. And then here comes some type of magical entity that just does whatever the fuck. I don't know. Like it just does things that are inexplicable. And what entity? Like Gandalf is a wizard who can like yeah. do magic. And then there's also Saruman who can also like do magic. Okay. I don't know what he does. Yeah. Like, I really don't know what he is. Or are, so are both... all the wizards like chosen by the, like, yeah. the god? The, the wizards, the there's like three tiers. There's like Iluvatar who's god then i think there's like the valar which are like high-ranking angels and the Maiar that are low-ranking angels that might be flipped but gandalf and saruman are are the low-ranking angels that's what they are see but one of them's gray and one of them's white isn't that right. a ranking yes yeah, so they there's multiple wizards there were two blue wizards there's a brown wizard the blue wizards by the way went insane and just like abandoned the cause um but they're they're like the only two who are still around and following the original mission they were given for their order. Um, what about the brown one, Radagast? Isn't he still around? No, he's fucking off in the forest. He he just like chills in the forest. He doesn't do anything in the Lord of the Rings itself. Um, are these people but, going to show up in the movies? No, Radagast is in the Hobbit. Um, but so um, so they're they're low ranking angels, and then Saruman. Uh, no, sorry, Sauron. Sauron is a high ranking angel who turned with the original like devil character a long time ago why did he turn so well, why did saruman turn so saruman turned because he's been slowly being corrupted by sauron for like a long time because he's luvatar and the high-ranking angels have stepped back on the good side they don't really involve themselves directly anymore which why? pisses because the world is fading the magic is ending and so okay. they're they have less impact and they're less interested in the world for the most part. And also Iluvatar's whole thing is that the world should be uh, inherited by mortals and inherently the only real race of mortals is men. So everyone else is sort of flying away um, and fading away. And that pisses both Sauron and Saruman and Sa Sauron is like, the devil's lieutenant from the first war who was named Morgoth. He was like literally Lucifer. His story is like, he's the favorite of the God. He turns, he launches a rebellion. It's horrible. He gets defeated. Sauron, however, survives. And this is his like attempt. All right. <laughs> um, all right. Doesn't Bilbo, when he like disappears at his birthday party, wouldn't the Nazgul like know that? Yes, the uh, they should know exactly where he is the minute he does that, and I guess that's why they arrive. But if they're searching for him earlier, it's strange that they aren't there like right away. Okay, that's done differently in the book. What are the orcs? So okay, the orcs in in the actual lore, the orcs are elves who are tortured and twisted and turned into like a deformed subspecies by uh, Morgoth. However, in this, and that's brought up again in this, that's kind of what they are, but they also seem to be like birthed from the earth. 
like they're like just like discovered um and so that's when, weird. when the lead orc or whatever yeah was was born i told jade i'm like that's what your c-section is gonna look like he comes out <laughs> of the, the womb he's like oh my. <laughs> he's like killing the doctor <laughs> <laughs> well, Emerson, isn't there a difference between normal orcs and the orukai? Yeah, the orukai are different than orcs. So the the orcs like normal, and this is going to get down in the weeds, which is why I hadn't gone into this. There's three. There's three groups. Okay, there's goblins, there's orcs, and there's the orukai. Goblins move really fast, but they can't move during the day. Like the sunlight is a problem to them. Okay, okay. and goblins are like a weird subspecies of men. Orcs are like destroyed elves who can move during the day, but they're slow. Like, they're not, like, light and nimble. They're just, like, bruisers. Urukai are a crossbreed between goblins and orcs, so they can move quickly during the day, but they also are strong. And, like, they're, like, not, like, scared little fucking nerds. So the ones they fight in Moria are goblins. Those are goblins. Yeah, and that's kind of what... So they can move fast? Well, well, so the, they, they aren't affected by the light. That's why they're a lot of them are using arrows. It's why they're really cowardly. It's why they have light armor and are basically getting destroyed, whereas the Urukai have much heavier armor, and they're like giving Aragorn, Aragorn and the rest of the Fellowship much more of a problem. Okay. Um, was that the guy who plays Filch and Walder Frey? That was like, I don't know, he was like an innkeeper or something? No, I think that was someone different. You're talking about in Bree, right? I don't know the names of it, the places. It was when they go into the rainy. bar to search for Gandalf. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, they let him are you in. talking about the guy in the inn itself, or are you talking about the gatekeeper? The gatekeeper guy. He was like wearing a hood, but it's it sounded a lot like that guy, Walder Frey. David, I don't Bradley. think it was him. Okay, here's a weird question. Okay. At some point, Gandalf tells Frodo that it's October 24th. They have a Julian calendar. So uh, in the actual books, no, they don't. But I'm guessing Peter Jackson just changed that because the actual date system is fucking insane. Like, it's like... Was it like, essential to know? No, it, it was wasn't. October but 20. I'm guessing he just like wanted to like put that in. And by the way, Tolkien's like whole deal is that this world is our world just thousands of years ago before all the magic faded and disappeared. Like, and so... I used to think that when I was a kid, but not because I, I heard what Tolkien intended. I used to just be like, this is supposed to be like a long time ago, <laughs> like yes. in our world. I didn't understand what like a fantasy world was necessarily. Um, I was thinking with the latest news that Will is gay in Stranger Things. Like <laughs> if this if this movie happened today, 100% Sam would be gay and totally in love with Frodo. Has there been like discussion about how weirdly in love he is with Frodo? Okay, so yeah, so it's based off a stereotype, actually, their relationship, which is called the officer and the gentleman. Right. And so it's like very much based off like early in like industrial, late Victorian, World War One era notions of like like chivalry and brotherhood and like camaraderie. So yes, it becomes like essentially just love. <laughs> um, I, I've seen this meme before, but what's up with Gandalf having access to eagles? Okay, so the <laughs> eagles, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the eagles are basically servants of one of those upper level angels I was talking about, and a few of them still fuck with things from time to time. So Gandalf is like, if he can communicate with like, I think it's the nature God or maybe it's the, but whatever, if he can, and that's what he's doing with when he captures the moth, he can occasionally get some support like every so often, but it's like very rare that anyone helps him out. So that is, that is a little odd. Cause if you look at it from the way it happens in the films, it's, it's every, instance where he needs them it's like it's very free it's not only very twice free, but it's twice i'm yeah, also counting the, uh, the house of house and the hobbits to uh, transport the hobbits. frodo what'd you say doesn't he need to transport frodo he would but if he asks for that they wouldn't she wouldn't agree why the, the, because she, as i said they're like very finicky like it's basically like you need to solve this problem on your own so why why do they grant it to him when he needs to like 
because he's a lower level angel. So it's like for him, it's like, okay, we can get you out of here, but they're not going to provide the Eagles to take them to Sauron, who's a higher level angel, who's equal with the person who sent the Eagles. Have you guys ever seen how it should have ended for Lord of the Rings? No. no. The, uh, the You know what how it should have ended is, right? Yes. The, Don't literally the anything here. Okay, never mind. Then. Okay, that's fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know what he was going to say, Everson? I, I, there's like a few things he's probably going to bring up, and it's probably related to the memes you've seen. However, I'm just pointing out that you said you remember like three things at the start of this podcast that Everett's like, yeah, so what the hell should have ended? Like, <laughs> I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait then. I'll wait. Um, so how does... Smeagol or Gollum. First of all, I don't even know which one he is. Like he's both. Why do they refer to him sometimes as one instead of the other? Uh it depends on whether or not they're um feeling kind. Smeagol, he is physically both of them. He has split personality going on. All right. How does he lose the ring to Bilbo? So it's in the Hobbit, the movies and the book, but basically uh he's got the ring, and then when Bilbo is going to the Lonely Mountain. Uh, he is able to secure the ring from Gollum. It's different in the movies versus the books. In the books, he kind of like just snags the ring away and tricks him. He tricks Bilbo and is able to like keep the, or he tricks Gollum and is able to keep the ring. And I don't remember how he does it in the movies. And I think in the movies, uh, he witnesses Gollum beating the shit out of a goblin and the ring falls out of his pocket and he just finds it. And then he has the, they have, they exchange the riddles and he escapes and with it. I think that's how it happens in the movie. Um, how old is Arwen? Arwen is fucking old, like super old. I'm pretty certain. Let's so see. yet another case of an immortal character somehow being obsessed with someone who's like 25 years old. Yes, but to be fair, Aragorn is 87 in this. Is she like Elrond, where she remembers the war with Sauron? She's 2901. So does she remember the war with Sauron? No, because it ended 3,000 years ago. She was born after it. Okay. So and, but, what, what is her interest in Aragorn? Aragorn is the last um, of the blood of Numenor, which was the first kingdom of men, which is why I just said he's 87. And so the first men are supposed to be like more pure. They live to like 300 years old. They're stronger. They're, but they're basically dying because every time they reproduce, they lose a little bit of that. And so all of that like splendor and glory of men is gone, except Aragorn is one of the last like remaining. That's also why he's the descendant of the king because he has the blood of Numenor. And so she's interested in him because he's this like fabled character that their god, because the elves worship Iluvatar, he's obsessed with the Numer Numenor, like and all the humans. Um, and so he's this like basically he was what was meant to be, and he's kind of the last one that's left. And he's been around helping the elves in the aftermath of like, well, not the aftermath, but in his lifetime, he's been helping the elves and the kingdom of men trying to keep things together. But isn't he like a child in her eyes? Essentially, yes. But okay. he, remember, my, my boy Tolkien, he has no issues with age discrepancies. So why? So she chooses mortality. Kind of. But so by choosing to not leave. By choosing to not leave, she's essentially guaranteeing she's going to die at some point here. Maybe not like right away, but she is going to die because she chooses not to leave. Not to leave the elf kingdom? Not to leave Middle Earth to go to where all the elves are going. So, so it could be still like a thousand years. No, but like maybe 200. Okay, so... Okay, so when she hands him that little gem thing, mm -hmm. the light of... I thought that was apparently what was keeping her immortal. It kind of is, and it kind of isn't. This is where it gets confusing, and it Boy. gets it gets referenced <laughs> in uh, some of the next movies, but basically her life gets tied to the star that that thing represents, that gem represents, and as Sauron gets stronger, that star grows fainter. So if Sauron wins, she dies immediately. That's like basically declared. However, if Sauron loses, she's still going to die, but not immediately. 
is this just how elf lives work or uh with her specifically it's something to do with how elrond like tied her life to something to because the magic was declining but i don't think any other elf okay. is like that like i don't think legolas is like oh shit that star over there is getting dark how old is legolas the last... legolas is pretty fucking old too i think let me see i don't remember how old he is uh I remember he's in the Hobbit movies, not the book. He's he's uh he's a paltry two thousand nine hundred and thirty one years old. All right, it's kind of uh, ironic. They're, they're both of those people were born right after the war ended. So just well, that's off the kind rest. of the point. There's very few people left who were born before the war because they either die in the second war because the second war is like what ruins every hope, or a lot of the older elves have left because. They, there's not enough magic to connect them to Wait, the Wait, there was a second war? There's three wars. So the first war is Morgoth when he rises up, and that's the end of the first age. And that's when like things first start falling apart. Was Morgoth the second... Lucifer? Yes, Morgoth was Lucifer. Okay. Then there's the second war, which is when Sauron, the first time, tries to fuck everything up. And that, by the way, is what it looks like the Amazon show is going to be about. And so the second war is where Sauron and a bunch of people like go full – like they basically try to take over the world. However, the elves and the gods and stuff are still kind of involved, so they're the ones primarily leading the charge. And then the end of the second war is the start of this movie where the alliance of men and elves invade so Mordor. End of the se- so the second war is where Sauron dies. Yes, and the ring – but the ring isn't destroyed, which sets up the third war. Okay, so there's a big theme in this story about how men seize power. Yes. Like they can't help themselves but seize power, yet there's no Gondor king in Aragorn's absence. So there's a steward. It's Boromir's father. Why doesn't he crown himself king? Because like the people wouldn't – in the books, it's stated that the people wouldn't accept it if he crowned himself king. Like he needs a victory to be worthy of being a king. Because remember, the line of kings from Gondor are descended from that bloodline of like those men who are like insanely OP, basically. They're like man plus. And so it's not as easy as just like, oh, we're kings now. But being steward is basically king. If he w- if if he wins the coming war, he could crown himself king. It seems odd that nobody would like try to fight him for stewardship and then crown himself king, like some type of civil war. I mean, the whole theme is like them; they can't help themselves. But a lot of the times, they can't help themselves in the presence of the ring, specifically. So, if the ring had gone to Gondor, that probably would have happened. Um, and so, where do the Gondor people think Aragorn has been all this time? Like, they so like they a- thought the line was broken. They're not. So the the kingdom of Arnor, which is like it used to be, the kingdoms of Gondor and Arnor were one big kingdom. The kingdom of Arnor was like destroyed at the end of the Second War, and the and um after Isildur dies, it's like not entirely clear where Isildur's brothers are, who are the ones who would continue the line. And so they just think the line might have been broken. Isildur's brothers, but this is Isildur's son, right? No, he's Isildur's brother's like great, 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 great grandson. It's he's not directly related to Isildur. And he knows this. Why doesn't he go become king? Because he thinks he'll be corrupted. Because it's the same blood that Isildur had. Like, because he's related. He's like, I'll be corrupted. I'll lose if I. Try. So all of these guys never had a battle to fight. What do you mean never had a battle to fight? Like to become king? Like they never had an enemy to fight against? Oh, no. They were always fighting against Sauron, the Easterlings. They were always fighting against all How sorts of things. How come no one could be crowned king? You mean in the past between Isildur yeah. and Aragorn? Yeah. Because the stewards were in charge, and they were happy with that. But they could have been king if they had won victories. Right, but they haven't been winning victories. They've been losing steadily. Like Gondor's been getting weaker and weaker and weaker ever so since they're always the losing? Season. Basically, like all the they, and you'll see this a lot in the second and third movies, but it's like, okay, remember when they make camp at that watchtower in this movie? They say, like, the watchtower of whatever. It's where the Nazgul, like, stabbed Frodo. It's like that ruin. That was inside something. Yeah, they're inside, but they're in that big ruined tower. It's where, like, 
they Frodo wakes up and they've made that fire. They're making bacon. They're on top of a big ruin tower. I thought they were that was inside the mountain. No, Wait, don't don't they run to it? Like uh well no, they're on the side of it and then they run up it. But so on the that that watchtower, that's not inside the mountain. That's like just a watchtower. That's before they even go into the mountain. It's before they go to Rivendale. Or Riverdale. Or Rivendale. Um but basically that the point of what I'm trying to make is that that watchtower is like that used to be a watchtower of Gondor, like in ages past. That was part of their like military defenses, but it's gone. It's overrun because it was destroyed. And like so a common theme is that Gondor has just been getting weaker, weaker, weaker. And at this point, Gondor is like four cities maybe. Okay. So they go into the watchtower and there's like a password? Oh, so that's – no, that's Moria. So they go to the watchtower. Frodo gets stabbed. Uh, Aragorn fights the Nazgul. Is this the first time he gets stabbed and then they have to go to the elves? Yes, this is the first time they get okay. stabbed that I'm talking about. And uh, then they go to the elves, and then from the elves they go to Moria, which but, is – But he the, gets stabbed again, but he's saved in Moria. by his lingerie. Mithril armor, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> his little lacy number there. Yeah. For his honeymoon. Me yeah. <laughs> yes. I hate that stuff. It looks terrible. Um. Okay, so they need to go into the ruin. There's a password. Gandalf is in there figuring it out. Apparently, all you need to do is read Elvish. Legolas is just like fucking around. Doesn't well, so yeah, the apparently. reason they don't know is because it was made by the dwarves specifically to let in the elves of uh, R- Rivendale. And so the problem is that none of them actually know what the password is because Legolas isn't from Rivendale. And I guess Elrond just fucking didn't tell them shit. So, but it says like the Elvish word for friend. It says speak friend and enter. Yeah. But so like who who is it that knows what that word was? So Gandalf knows what the word is, but Frodo's the one who says like, "Well, have you tried just saying?" Frodo friend? can read it. No, Frodo can't read it. But who, who Gandalf, read it? Frodo can understand. Reads it. Uh, Gandalf reads it when he first there because Frodo says like what does it mean and Gandalf says it says speak friend and enter it's like saying say the passcode so you can get in and then Gandalf tries and fails for like three hours and then Frodo's like why don't you just say friend and then uh, Gandalf says friend and the door's open alright if you say so Um. so I like Boromir I like mm-hmm. that the prophecy was like watch out for him <laughs> basically condemning him um i thought the battle at the end was fine um i like that frodo splits up i guess that's an interesting way to do it i'm trying to think like how i would make this better having having no idea where it's going necessarily but i would have liked maybe to have them become the fellowship earlier and spend more time traveling mm-hmm. because if you're going to split them up for the next one then I don't know. It's just going to be different. Um, they they sort of hinted at like the marshes. Is that the second one? Third. That's the third one. So the second one is it still going to be mountains? Uh, and some other stuff they run into. I actually they may run into the marshes at the end of the second. I'm trying to remember. Um. Yeah, I just I would like to see the fellowship earlier and kill more of them off. I guess you mm-hmm. lost two in this movie. Um, I just I don't know I don't know how that that other elf shit is going to come into play, but I would have like maybe cut some of that out so that the movie. And I don't disagree hours. because the elven stuff in general is just like the payoff. I think the elves are done somewhat better in the next two movies in the sense that it's more just like hey we should do this okay and then you see the immediate effect yeah I mean there was I, honestly I thought the movie was a lot less stupid than I expected it to be um, I was I was expecting it to be like everything is just like pure eye roll like fantasy bullshit like oh it's inexplicable powers they just do things here and there um it has a pretty good core story of like Frodo has to carry the ring. He has to be away from other people. Everyone's tempted to like confront him. So he has to be on his guard the whole time. It seems odd that they would only send nine people. 
um, I don't know, isn't it, isn't like the fate of the world? Yeah, and so the reason they send the nine is it's supposed to be like representatives from all the great kingdoms, like one representative from all the great kingdoms. So you get the one elf, you get the one dwarf, you get the you get Boromir. And then what happens is the hobbits are just like, well, they're his friends. They want to go, so they're allowed to go. Then you get Aragorn because he's, you know, the chosen, like he's going to be the chosen one. And then Gandalf is leading them. Merry and Pippin should not be allowed to go. Yeah. Why Why would that be acceptable? Because they wanted to and they were just like, all right, fine, like more hobbits. What about like, second person? A joke that was made in the class I took on Lord of the Rings because we did discuss like there's no reason for them to be there um, because it's even stated in the books how like they're absolutely helpless. Like the movies try to give you some like, oh, they kind of can use swords, but in the books it's like they're helpless. Um, one of the well, jokes – they're also like chaotic. Yeah, and mm-hmm. one of the jokes my teacher was like, well, that way they can like – sacrifice a couple of them when the orukai catch up be like oh that's the one take him like is that the only reason well that's the joke she made we don't know why he well that's why i was like well they actually serve a purpose and and so otherwise like even gandalf like what they did with the dragon fireworks and all that shit like yeah gandalf should be like no fucking way (laughs) am i taking these idiots like they're complete imbeciles they will cause more trouble. They won't follow directions. This is essentially a military march. Yeah. And like these guys cannot fall in line. What what happens when their feet get sore? You think you want fucking Mary and Pippin like bitching to you all the whole way? Yeah, and, and this is kind of the start of their arc throughout the whole movies, is that they're like that. I still think that's one of the funniest parts of the movie is the fact that the reason Frodo gets stabbed basically is because they decided to make bacon. That's one hundred percent their fault. Yep. I don't remember the bacon for some reason. He wakes Frodo up. I don't remember the sausage. They were they had sausage. Well, Frodo wakes up and like they're cooking everything. And and he's like, You idiots, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, put it out. They're like, Oh, you got fucking you stepped on my tomatoes or whatever. And then they hear the Nazgul and see them coming up. And it's like, you fucking morons. Like Nazgul are cool. Are we gonna see them again? Yeah. In for every some reason movie. that has stuck with me through the years. Like I remember them. They're in every movie, and they get more screen time. Well, one of them specifically gets more screen time. The Nazgul are very fucking cool. I've had so many Nazgul action figures over the years. And I've been trying to find a really good one six scale. One you should they, like uh, try to model your outfit stars. after them and like walk around like that. <laughs> walk like a uh, oh. What do you guys the... know that I have a I have a Grim Reaper in my living room next to my display that I made like, like for a like life size uh, one. Okay, I have um it's a medical skeleton, like one of those like life size skeletons on the, the rack. And I okay. put I put a Grim Reaper uniform on it. So it, it's basically like my Nazgul that guards my my collection, but I use it for a uh, it's puppeteered, so like I can pull strings and the mouth moves and the hands move and stuff like that. How is it Nazgul? Because it, it has the hood. And it's uh that you just talk to it while puppeteering it. I mean, yeah, but I I don't know. It looks similar. I'll send you a picture. It's yeah, not as it has disheveled. a hood. That's it has a black hood. It's, it's not very, as disheveled. It's literally there's literally no difference between what you have and a Grim Reaper. Yeah, I know. Except okay. that it doesn't have a scythe. But so but let me just, live in let me live in my fantasy, in please. Hood. Please don't <laughs> don't don't ruin Nazgul. my fantasy, please. <laughs> don't the Nazgul have like armored hands and something? You're yeah, gonna hurt. You're gonna hurt his feelings. Don't let him hear you. It's it's just the. <laughs> Is correct. <laughs> Why do you have that? Because I can. I don't know. Did you like buy it. a skeleton? Yeah, I bought the skeleton, but I I modded Those it so I can cheap. puppeteer it. No, it was it was like a hundred. You talk bucks. to it while you puppeteer really? it. Yes, I stand in front of my my collection. And I speak to it like it has a personality. I think you no, obviously. With it. I think you're dancing with it at night. Oh jeez, that would be fucking terrifying. My, my goal, candles. I want to. Uh, have you guys ever seen? Um, oh, have geez. you ever seen the meaning of life of Monty Python? Monty Python, no. meaning of life. There's a there's a skit at the end of the movie where all these British people die, and the Grim Reaper comes to claim their souls, and they're just basically fucking around with him the whole time. But the whole thing, like the the Grim Reaper, is puppeteered. It's an actual like physical puppet that they like carry around on their shoulders. And that's what I wanted to emulate with it. I wanted to create something like that. So you are puppeting it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, basically. Move its hands, move its fingers, move its mouth, have it talk. Oh, Jesus. 
<laughs> on Ruben's film, not, well, not like no just way. out of nowhere. <laughs> like I don't walk around my house with it and like have a talk to everybody. No. I was thinking something much more intimate. No, I don't. I don't have it like. What exactly are you doing like with its mouth that it needs to move? It moving its well, hands. Consider, and consider it. It's it's just a jaw and teeth. Nothing like you're imagining, probably. Yeah, but it has fingers. And hey, hand. a hole in any port, right? Isn't that what they say? <laughs> <laughs> I got I got us off topic. I'm sorry. Um, one of the funniest things was when Aragorn threw like a flaming something right at it in the head <laughs> in the face, and he's like <laughs> running around like. So, so does fire kill them? This is, these are the things I didn't understand. Like I'm asking Jade, like, do, does this mean anything? Like, are they are they susceptible to fire? Are they like white walkers? So, so, so fire fucks with them for sure, but they can't be really be killed. They always come back because their their life force is now tied to the ring and sorrow. Okay, so that's weird because I'm watching. I'm like, I don't know. Should I be like, hey, they're beating the Nazgul, or should I be like? I don't know. They they need to run. Like I don't know how to feel. Yeah, I, no, it seems and like yeah, they're winning, but I don't know. They, but they're really are. not. Well, the Nazgul always come back. That's exactly why when Arwen is taking Frodo across the river, they're like all back basically, except for a couple that are that are still in Mordor. Okay, I'm excited to see the next one. Um, Elm's what, Deep uh, is sick. What? What else do you guys have to say about it? I don't have um, I, j- go ahead over it. Well, no, it's, I just have a few notes. I wanted to go down really quickly, but you can go first. Uh, I was just going to say my, my takeaway was just going to be that, you know, I think that based on what the book is like, there's so much, so much crap in the book, like so much, like every scene in this movie that you see that is a recreation of the book. There's like three or four like stories that are cut out between the next thing that happens. They stay in the both elven places for a while in the book. And they're like having conversations with characters and like like and something in the book that is really annoying is that he constantly has characters launch into like these long lamentation poems when they like see something that like tugs <laughs> on their heartstrings. So it's like when they get into fucking Moria, fucking Legolas spends four pages like reciting what he's like seeing in terms of like what it reminds him of. And I'm like, Jesus, fuck. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, Jesus. I hate that shit. Um, one thing that I remember from the second one is being incredibly bored the entire time. And then suddenly the Battle of Helm's Deep happens and I'm like, whoa, that was fucking awesome. <laughs> and then, yeah, like, I'm looking forward to some more war. Hopefully the second one's better than I remember. Second one... In my opinion, each movie ramps up the war. Well, it should. That's how. Yeah, that's how it should be. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. So, do you have a fighter of the week? I did. Everett, did you have anything you wanted to say, or was it just like quick comments? Um. You know, like the I like the Nazgul. That though the scene where uh they like stab the pillows in the inn and like are walking around. Uh, like what that kind of freaked me out as a kid. Also, oh, um, yeah, why did how did they not know that there was no one in the bed? So, the idea is that they and this is actually better explained in the book. So, they break into Bree because Frodo puts on the ring, so they know where he is roughly. When they get in there, they find the manifest which says which room they're in, like, and so they find the room. <laughs> and so, actually they actually like reading the manifest, they can, yeah, they can read. They're, <laughs> they're like, they're, they're, they're smart. And they, so they just launch the attack at on the room, assuming like, okay, we'll just kill them all and it'll be done. And remember, Frodo is nearby, he's across the street. So they can sense that he's in the area, but it's not like, it's not like accurate sense. It's more like a radar pulse, like he's somewhere around here. So, and we knew he was here and his name's on the manifest. So, so like, they just start stabbing pillows. They well, they they assume they're just gonna slay whoever's in there. And then yeah. what do they think after they like? Well, they realize they've been duped, and they assume he's <laughs> fled. So they immediately dip out to try to figure out where he went. They don't. They don't expect that he's just across the street. And then and then they're fine until he they cook the sausages again. Well, because they're still in the area searching for them. Because it's like that pulse, as I said. Unless Frodo actually puts the ring on, it's more of just like we generally know he's around here. And so they're still searching and when they see that fire because they're idiots and they set a fire to cook 
Well, they are like, that's him for sure. So they yeah. arrive. All right. Mm-hmm. Emerson, uh, I was going to ask you um, that when he's facing down the Balrog and he says, wasn't it like I'm the wielder of the flame of Anur? Isn't that what you're yeah. talking about? The guy? Yeah. And that's the king. That was the old, the other kingdom of man that had fallen because Gandalf, that's like his assigned area. Sar- the Saruman's area. Of the flame of Anur. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Saruman is the one who's kind of like assigned to like Rohan and uh, Gondor, and then Gandalf was assigned to Arnor, but it fell, so he doesn't really have anything to do anymore. <laughs> and then uh, the last thing I'll say is, um, it took me a while to realize because I, I like The Hobbit, the book and the movies by I guess sort of extension, but it took me a while to realize that the the crypt that they find in Moria was Balin's uh uh. Yes, Ballin. Ballin from the Hobbit. Yes. Yeah, I didn't realize that until much later. I knew I know that now, but I think yeah. that's kind of interesting. You go through the entire book and he got with him, and then he got fucked up. Yeah, yeah. Well, he shouldn't have lost the war when against the God. The place him. where they're like, this is actually a tomb. Mm-hmm. Well, it's well, they find his grave. Gimli's like crying over that uh, grave, and it's where Pippin knocks the like bucket down the well that causes the goblins to figure out they're there. Yeah. Uh, also, like it, it, you can kind of if if you've read the Hobbit or seen the movies, like I think if I remember correctly, Gimli's dad is one of the group of uh, dwarves that goes hunting for the Lonely Mountain and everything. So I'd imagine that he probably grew up with stories of that, that kind of stuff, and then to find him dead is a little heartbreaking. But whatever. Anyway, that's dwarves it. suck. What can I say? Um, so, Kia, the fight of the week is if you were in charge of creating the Fellowship of the Ring, you assume you're Gandalf in this scenario, you have to create the Fellowship from our, like, friend group. Uh, who do you pick? Our and friend for what group? Roles? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the real answer is just take them all because they're almost all worthless individually. <laughs> yeah, but you so... could only... You can only pick the same about what is it nine? Yeah, nine companions. You Do we only... have nine people from our group? Yeah, you could expand it to like you know the Xbox group and just like people around. Wait, okay, who outside of the Xbox group is the question? Uh, like... You can put David Gorman, Ian Fletcher, uh, Ian Hall. I mean, I'll take Ian. Okay, but I think there's only still nine, isn't there? So there's the three of us. So that's three. You've got. Trevor, Blake, Cameron. So that's six. I'm going to add David in there for seven. I'm going to add Ian Fletcher, Ian Hall. That's nine. David Gorman uh, for 10. Um, let's see. Let's put Mike Shy in there because I want you to have like someone. that. <laughs> so that's 11. So of this group, who are you picking for your nine and for what role? Okay, I'm taking Mike for sure. I'm taking Ian Fletcher. I'm ditching David Gorman because I don't know him. Okay. And then there's one other I have to ditch. I want to take Fat David because, um, like, I think it's good to have somebody to, like, leave as a straggler. <laughs> okay. For, like, at least the first attack. Um, <laughs> but who would I be leaving? Like, who would I be trading him for? It's up to you. Who do you think? I don't know. Who's, like, left that? So there's me, Everett, Blake, Trevor, Cameron, and uh, Ian Hall that are still remaining. Can he also take Jade? Or I mean, I assume he wouldn't take Jade. I'm but not sure. taking Jade. The The strategy right now is like to sacrifice each one of you each time <laughs> <laughs> a, a battle happens. So you, so you get nine chances to get from point A to point B. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so far he's taken Mike Shy, Ian Fletcher, and David Hamrick. And Kia, so you have four, so you need five more. Well, I would people. take like I would take like Trevor, you, Everett. Okay. So I don't know. What is that? What so you now at? you're at you're at Ian Fletcher, Kia, uh, David Hamrick, Mike Shy, me, Everett, Trevor. So now you're at seven. You need two more people. And so you have Ian Hall, you have Cameron, and you have Blake. So you need to pick two of those three. I'll take Blake and Cameron. You leave Ian Hall. Well, he's just so frail. <laughs> like, he might, he's like taking one of the hobbits. Like, why? He is a nice guy. Maybe he should carry the ring. I don't know. Yeah, but you think Cameron is less frail? You think Ian's the Frodo? I mean, he's slightly bigger, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. 
so I see. Good. I'm only taking Blake and Trevor because I plan to sacrifice them because they're not team players. Like that's why I, they're like easy picks because I'm like, yeah, we're gonna leave Trevor behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're we're at the bridge and like the Balrogs there. They're like, what do we do, Kia? And Kia looks at Trevor. He's like, Trevor, uh, cast this spell. Like, go to the bridge. And Trevor's like, okay. And he's Trevor's like, our wizard. Blah, 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 blah. And then he looks back, and we've already all left. And he just destroys. <laughs> no, it. that's that's actually what I'm gonna do. Is I'm gonna take Ian, make him the ring bearer because he's light, and I could carry him. So the plan will, is literally, I'm just going to outrun the rest of you every single time. Whoever makes it, makes it. <laughs> Somebody's going to get caught. You know, so. Multiple somebody's are going to get caught. I give everybody die. one chance because I brought Fat David. So you get one <laughs> chance to escape. After can you that, imagine Everett, you, you, after you, that. <laughs> can you imagine though, Kia? You're like, you were like, okay, I have all these chances. And then like half the group gets killed in one encounter. <laughs> Because they're all slow, like they just like like David's David's being slow, so he gets but I caught. Can't but that. Goes the I wrong can't control that. I can't control that they're like like fat and slow and like unathletic. I that's who I've got to choose from. That's fucking hilarious. All right, fair enough. And then I would try to sacrifice you, Emerson, at some point because I feel like you try to take the ring. Oh, for sure, I'd be going <laughs> for the ring. Like Emerson's <laughs> the Boromir. By the way, fun fact about the ring itself. Um, it the only things it does is one, it makes you invisible, and two, is that it makes voluntary? You, yeah, you have to put it on to make you invisible. But like and the, anytime you wear the ring, you're invisible. Yes. So if Sauron but, wears the ring, but he is wearing invisible. the ring. No, because Sauron is the ring, so it it does different things for him. But for the average person, if you wear the ring, you're invisible. And the other thing, the only other power it has is it gets in your mind and gaslights you that it has other powers. Like it doesn't do anything. It just makes you think that it can do something. That's, that's why it good. fucking it only works for Sauron. Basically, yeah. And so that's why Sauron or uh, Boromir, when he's talking to Frodo before he takes the ring, he's like, "I'm only asked for the strength to save my people because, like, the ring just like makes you think that it can do whatever you want it to, but in reality, that's all its ability is. It just fucks with you. And it tells the Nazgul where you are. Well, yeah, but that's like a function of it, not. Like one of its abilities. As a as a small side note, can I just say how how much I love the design of Sauron's eye? Just when they put the ring on and you see it, it's so it looks cool. like a vagina. Is I that what care. you imagine think... when you're fucking the skeleton? <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> carves the Sauron shaped hole into the skeleton's crotch. I see you. <laughs> oh Jesus, dude! But not for sex. It's just. It's 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 for to be cool, dude. It guards his action figures that all watch. <laughs> yeah, it dances a jig. And eh, mock me all you want. I still think it's cool. <laughs> um okay, so for roundup, I actually have a lot. Okay. All right. First up, I watched No Time to Die. Yeah, how'd it go? It was terrible. It was honestly so really? bad. I hated it. Yeah. I hated every second of it. That Holy is why shit. I've sworn never to watch it or step into a theater. With 30 minutes left to go, I was texting Claudia and I was like, have you seen this movie? Because I'm about to give up. Like, I don't want to finish it. She's like, it's the worst ever. Like, I can't believe it. my friends liked it. And there was 30 minutes left. I'm like, I know that's just the final action sequence. And like the action was pretty much the only thing I wanted to watch. Right. Even that was just dumb. Like, it was just, it wasn't bad. In the sense of like, wow, this is really poorly made. I just right. didn't give a fuck anymore. He it's just like, dumb on the same level as the other Bond films that we've watched. He looks like her dad. Like they're supposed to be in love and he, he's straight up like her dad. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And, and the story is actually about their love. Like them like coming together. And I'm like, dude, like, are you going to pay for her college? Because that's what this feels like. like <laughs> this is James weird. Bond is a sugar daddy fucking weird he's not even a sugar daddy he, he literally looks like her dad it's just weird like i can't i can't close my mind to this and then he you know spoilers he dies and i tried to tell jade because she was sitting next to him like he's about to die and like they're playing the sad music and everyone's like <gasps> like and and jade's like he's not dead i'm like no he's actually dead they're like that's the woman double agent she's like no or 007 she's like no he's not dead he's coming back i'm like I wonder how many people sat in that movie and were just like, yeah, but James Bond always comes back. And so it, it was like rendered meaningless. Yeah, they lose the entire <laughs> emotional punch of the movie. That'd and I also just hilarious. didn't care because like Daniel, 
Also, they made him kind of like stupid. Like they almost like made him into Chris Hemsworth as Thor. Really? Like they didn't go as far, but he's definitely more like jovial and like cracking. I don't know, wise cracks or something. Like he's saying some one liners as he's like shooting people. I was like, it's not a lot. It's not like Thor, but it is interesting. Like he's different. Um, hmm. Okay. But it, it not in like a good way. It, it was more like he doesn't care. Like no one cares anymore. They have to like contractually fulfill this obligation of this movie, which I'm like, if they just didn't, I don't know. Do they think people are like, we never got the ending to him and uh, Madeline's relationship. <laughs> um, then there was Rami Malek as the villain. Oh yeah. But he was not the villain. He was barely in it. What and, was his purpose? Because there was speculation on know. who he was. I don't know. He like killed Madeline's mother when she was a child and then was going to kill her, but then saved her. And then they had some type of relationship. I couldn't follow it. I didn't give a fuck anymore. Um, they killed Jeffrey Wright. Uh, you know, his Felix, Felix something, the, he, the CIA thing. Uh, yeah. They killed him. He was like double crossed by his CIA partner. Bond has apparently been working in secret for the CIA, even though he was supposed to be retired. Um, what's his name? Uh, Voldemort is in it. What's that guy's name again? Ralph Feinstein. Yeah, Ray Fine. Yeah. Um, he was he was fine. Like I don't know. M was in it. Q was in it. Um, so the the I don't even know her name, but like the black Captain Marvel. Yeah, she's, in it. she's the new double O. I don't think there's going to be a movie with her. I would be shocked. Like they might feel like under pressure to pander to that crowd, but money financially, nobody's showing up to that movie. And I think and they've said bad. they're going to retire James Bond for the moment, aren't they? Well, what does that? What does retire mean? Retire the meaning like they're not going to make any movies about him or her for the next like few years. Or they're going to reboot it entirely. So they're just going to not make. He's not. They're not retiring. Like retiring in like quotations. Like they're not going to obviously get. They're rid taking of the a break. They're taking a break. That's a good way to describe it. Um. They shouldn't. She, she was fine, honestly, but I don't want to watch this type of movie anymore. Yeah, I'm done. Like you want to make a spy movie where the female's a spy and she's like. I don't know, infiltrating. You know, those movies tend to be slower burns. They're cheaper to make. They don't do as well financially. Fine. Like Red Sparrow or something, which I never saw. Um, make that movie if you must. But like these like crazy car chase things, like I don't know. Tom Cruise seems to get away with it, but it's like all action. Yeah, spectacle. But even that, I think at a certain point is just like it's Tom Cruise now that people Yeah, are going it's to his brand, basically. Yeah. They're not going to see like Mission Impossible. They're going to see Tom Cruise, I think. I don't. I couldn't tell you who any of the side characters are at this point. I know it's like the Star Trek guy, and uh, Ring Ving Rames or or Ring Vames. I don't know what his name is. <laughs> uh, and then there's like a couple other like new women that we kind of know. Um, I don't know. Um, so that was that was one. I give that an absolute loss. Yikes. I watched House of Gucci. Oh, how was oh, that? Oh, yeah. It was decent. So I didn't, I thought the story was about how, like, she came in as, a, as an outsider and revitalized and saved the company. Did, do you guys know what the story actually is? Isn't it more that, like, no. she steals the company? I don't know anything no. about it. So, no. Oh, no, I don't know. No. Do you want me to tell you? I don't care. Yeah. The story is about how she murders her husband. What? Yeah. But it, she doesn't like that. Doesn't happen until the very end. Does, like, and this is real. She actually yeah, did this. Yeah, what the I, fuck? I didn't know that's what the story was. The murder is not on the table until like the last twenty minutes. So it's basically about her. Like it's about their relationship. Basically, she doesn't really revitalize the company. There is like some company treachery going on, and you see some of that. Jared Leto is playing like a cartoon. Um. Like I, he doesn't do a bad job, it's, but he is a cartoon. Al Pacino is like playing someone who's slightly less cartoonish, um, but I'm guessing he's probably more true to the real character. Um, I thought uh, Adam Driver was great. He did a good job. He's the one who gets murdered. I thought uh, Lady Gaga was great. Um, 
it's just kind of like the music soundtrack is pretty cool. It's like disco, like 80s, 70s, 80s shit. Um, and then, I don't know, it's just, like they get married. They're, they have some success. They're, they start doing some backstabbing. The relationship deteriorates. She wants to have him murdered. She goes to jail. So, yeah, Salma Hayek's in it as her psychic. Like, it, it's okay. If you have some time to kill, just put it on. It's okay. Um, I watched another movie that probably nobody watched with Zachary Levy, Levi. I don't know. Um, mm. He plays, it's called American Underdog. It's on Hulu. He plays Kurt Warner, uh, the famous quarterback for the Rams. Um, his story is a bit unique because he was already like kind of old and washed up before he got his shot at the NFL and then became like a big time MVP, like famous guy. Like, I don't know football that much, but I know who Kurt Warner is. I know who he played for. You know, I know all that stuff. It's a decent film. Um, you know, it's your classic, like, feel good success story type film. Um, it's on Hulu. It, it, it was fine. It's like, it was only like, it was under two hours. Like, I, I would recommend it if you're just looking to put something on. Okay. Um, I watched, uh, this movie has been on my list for a long time. It's on HBO. It's called Buried. It's with Ryan Reynolds. Has anyone seen that? I've heard Buried? of it. I, don't, I haven't Buried seen it. Buried Alive. The movie is him in a coffin. It's Never him in the dark in a coffin. It's like an hour and a half. Or just um, him in the dark. He's a he's I guess he's a truck driver in Iraq, and he gets ambushed and like you don't see any of it. He just wakes up and he's like he has a cell phone and he's trying to call people for help explaining what happened. He gets a call from like the Iraqi people that put him there. They want ransom, so he's trying to call the embassy and like call his wife and like that sort of shit. And then they're they're trying to find him before he runs out of air. Um, it was decent. Another one <laughs> that's like. It's almost more like a podcast. <laughs> so like I, you know, I watch it while I work. That's like the perfect movie for me. So I, I actually did enjoy it. Um, I saw everything everywhere all at once. In the theater. How was that? It's good. I give it a win. It's also very strange. And so it starts off like, what's her name? Michelle Yeoh. She's like a struggling Chinese businesswoman. She's she owns a laundromat. They live above it. Her and her husband have a failing marriage. Her dad is very disappointed in her and like always judging her. Her daughter's a lesbian who like doesn't get the affection that she wants. They're she's trying to connect with her daughter. They're, they've got bills. They've got an IRS thing, and then it it unlocks all this multiverse shit. Do you guys have any idea what the plot is? No, no. I just knew there was a multiverse thing in it. I have no idea. So the Same plot here. is that. In a different universe, she unlocked the multiverse. And her husband um, is like one of her partners there and blah, blah, blah. So it, the idea is that – so she was killed in, in that universe where she created the multiverse. And it's her daughter that is like this weird – she's like turned her into this weird entity – that can hop across multiverses, uh, multiple universes. And so they're trying to find a version of Michelle Yeoh that can fight back against the like giant power that her daughter has become. Like her daughter is also looking for her. And so they have like cool ideas. Like you have to do something weird to trigger a different multiverse version of yourself. And I didn't fully understand like, it seems like they can take the skills from other multiverses and pull them into you. But it also seemed like you were, I, at first I thought that person was being transported, but in reality, you're actually like taking their skills. It was, it was interesting. It got super weird. Most of the humor was sex jokes, which I felt like was actually maybe the wrong tone, but it's probably what people are going to talk about. So like when I say do something weird at one point, like they have, they're in the IRS office and there are awards that are shaped like butt plugs. They look like butt plugs, but they're awards for like tax officers. So in order to do something weird, like the channel, like different versions of themselves, like one of the evil guys like tries to shove it up his ass. And he, and like, she's trying to stop him from like doing that. So she's like trying to, she's like moving the butt plug around and he's like trying to sit and jump on it. And, and so when he does that he can like then do karate or something 
Um, it's kind of cool. That, like the idea is like you do something weird, which will like connect you to a similar universe, which will then like slingshot you into a different. Um, yeah, I, it's complicated. But in, in terms of like multiverse, the co the complaints for Doctor Strange was like they only went to like one universe and like nothing really was that different. Like, oh, the lights are green or instead of red. Like, this one is different. They go through a bunch of different universes. It is funny sometimes. I hate all the toilet humor shit. I'm sure that was amazing for a lot of people. Um, but like, there's one universe where she has hot dog fingers. The fuck? And, and everybody has hot dogs for fingers. And um, so, like, the thing about Michelle Yeoh in that universe is that she's a failure, she's not good at anything. And like in every single one, she's like an expert at something. So in this version, she is not good at anything, which means that she can, she's the right person to like channel all the other ones because she doesn't have any specifics. She's basically a blank slate. So she's like, yeah. how could I be the worst one? What about the hot dog finger universe? <laughs> like those people don't do anything, which, you know, and it's like part of the story. Like it's actually not poorly written. It's just a lot there's a lot of shit going on right I, I think that they could have chopped 20 minutes out of it and it would have been a better movie um but they this version also had like the re-release so they, there was like an eight minute um blooper reel at the end which was them just like making sex jokes like for a lot of it i didn't care it wasn't as funny as they think it was <laughs> that that, that um, tracks because <laughs> normally i like blooper reels but this one i don't know it was okay um, I will say this though, if you had just cut out all the multiverse shit and given me the story of like the struggling Chinese woman with the laundromat and the issues with her daughter and her husband and their failing marriage and her daughter and not being, and her father and not being good enough. I mean, this is like little miss sunshine level story. I think Michelle Yeoh would be up for an Oscar if they had done that movie instead, which, you know, it would probably would have required a different cast, but I would have rather seen that movie if I'm being honest. <laughs> I would have much rather have seen that movie. And I think it would be like the film of the year. Um, Cause that part, that beginning part of the movie before the multiverse happens is actually really good. Um, so that I think was the last thing that I saw. I'm also reading a book on um, Stonewall Jackson. Okay. Rebel Yell. This is, uh, if you guys remember, I, I was reading that Empire book. Empire of the Summer Moon. Yeah, so this yeah. is, he has another book. Um, I'm really enjoying it, actually. And, you know, I'm not like a Southern sympathizer. I'm, that's not why I'm reading it. But I am trying to learn a little bit more about the history of the nation. And uh, it's funny. It's, you know, I have a lot in common with Stonewall Jackson, to be honest. <laughs> like, they, they give, like, a lot of examples about his personality and how he's, like, very straight to the point and almost literal, like, when he talks to people. And like, you know, I'm obviously a lot more casual. Um, he's like a hardcore, like Christian, like Bible thumping like, out of his mind. And that's why he's so rigid. Um, that's not why I'm so rigid. But I did, I did think like the way people would talk to him, like people would make a joke or have like a figurative way of speaking and he would give a literal answer. And then they'd be like, did you understand that he didn't like literally mean that? And he's like, I understand but I'm not going to like respond in the way that he wants, which is you know what that much reminds like... me of? when you're like, when people would say lit and you'd be like, Oh, it was illuminated. Yeah. Like, that's... that's exactly. Yeah. Or like, um, <clears throat> like I remember at the library once some lady was making a joke and it just wasn't funny. And, and she was like, that was a joke. And I was just like, yeah, I know. Like, cause you know, that's not good customer service, but I just can't, like, I can't bring myself to, I don't do that fake shit like, oh, ha, ha, ha. Like, no, I just was like, yeah, that, that was a joke. <laughs> like, indeed it was. I think one example was they, someone said to him, hey, you might remember that like this queen had this person as an advisor or something. And he's like, no, I don't remember that because I didn't know it. And he's like, I just think that that's really funny. Um, so I, I talk like that sometimes because I think that it's better. I think that it's better than being like fake. And I feel like communication in general is like a lot easier. People like, like if you remember Fowler used to joke that I was on the spectrum. It's like, I'm not on the spectrum. I understand social interaction better than most people. 
I talk like that because it's better. I get straight to the point. You're expecting me to do your bullshit small talk song and dance. And I know what you want. Why should I pretend like I don't? I'm just going to tell you the answer that you're looking for. I'm going to tell you that I don't have the answer and we're going to end the conversation. <laughs> I don't care. I don't know. I'm very straight to the point. I think part of it is because my mom was such a like sociopathic, like would talk around you. And like, I learned in order to like communicate clearly and to get what I wanted was to just like, I'm not going to let you fuck around. We're just going to get straight to the point here. Um, I think that's where I get it from. Stonewall Jackson seems to have gotten it from the Bible. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know. Here, one second. I will be right back. Um, move. Do you have anything for Roundup Everett? No, I haven't had the time. But, uh, okay. We I can think move on. We are moving on to gaming. Do you have anything for gaming? Uh, no, not particularly. Um, Emerson might, but uh, yeah, we'll move on. How about did you see the Oppenheimer trailer? Uh, I I've been seeing the posters. I haven't gotten a chance to see the trailer yet. Was it good? It was a teaser. Um, I'm back. We're talking about Oppenheimer. I saw the teaser. I mean, it's just like, isn't it just like drums? It's drums and like a couple of stills, and then like someone's talking, like he can change the world. Like no, 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 and like it was okay, but it was also just like. I would rather see a real trailer. I am interested in it. I didn't yeah. care for the trailer. Like, I'm not saying I th- I'm not sure if it's going to be good. I just don't care. Like, it was nothing. It, it's just like, hey, this movie is existing at some point. I was like, okay. Yeah. Noted. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, okay. Let's go to some news. And I have, it seems like a lot, but it's actually just like a bunch of bullshit. Um, there, there's a few interesting things, I suppose. Any Ezra Miller news this week? No. I was expecting it now. Uh, I mean, yeah, okay, so... All right, let's just go through it. Ten Marvel and DC superhero fight scenes that fail to do the comics justice. Oh, no. Wonder Woman versus Cheetah? Okay, that's I, probably... Okay, <laughs> sure. That was just bad, though. Remember how she like got that armor with the wings? Yeah. And then mm-hmm. it just immediately lost it? Yeah, it was so fucking stupid. Due to Cheetah's claws. <clears throat> um, X-Men versus Magneto in the X-Men movie. I mean, I think it was fine. Whatever. They have, we never they have really got stuff. to see the team of mutants working as well. A team. I mean, yeah, that's like all the movies. Uh, Daredevil versus Bullseye from the Daredevil movie. <laughs> Bullseye's I mean, battle with Elektra was great. Recreating an iconic moment from the comic books. Okay. Um, taking place inside a church it kicked off with a horrid CGI sequence that saw two rivals battling their way up a ridiculously huge organ before Matt Murdock basically tried to murder the villain by kicking him through a window it's alright that seems fine, whatever I feel like these are going to be nitpicks Batman versus Ra's al Ghul, Batman Begins I think it was fine they had a lot of good fights <clears> it was <throat> fine um he refuses to kill his former mentor. Bruce Wayne's decision to not save Ra's life is basically the same thing. Uh, this is where he's like, I don't have to save you, and then just flies out. Yeah. It is a little weird. It's like, this is why this whole I can't, I won't kill you bullshit. It's like, but I'll, I'll, I'll happily just let you burn to death in a fiery train crash. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Spider-Man versus Green Goblin 2 from Spider-Man 3. I actually thought this was a decent fight. I like their yeah their fight when he throws the grenade at his face is better than anything else really. Sure, yeah, I think they're both fine. Uh, Kitty Pride versus the Juggernaut. It starts with him pursuing the young mutant through a series of walls before being tricked by her and left stuck in the floor. That's not much of a fight. That's just more of a chase. But their their a counter argument here is idiotic. Like, oh, I would rather see a different fight. Like, yeah, I'd rather see him fight Colossus. Like, eh. I wouldn't because Colossus would lose. Yeah. Okay, Green Lantern versus Parallax. I'm guessing that, I, I didn't like that. I think the whole movie was crap. So I, I don't even remember, so we'll skip that one. Team Cap versus Team Iron Man from Civil War. I think that was fine. Yeah, it was fine. I mean, in the comics, it's like a giant battle um, in the streets. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. like everyone's bloody and dead. But that was the finale. There is a finale where everyone's like bloodied up and busted up and it just wasn't mm-hmm. this part. That's fine. Spider Man versus Electro. It wasn't. It was. That wasn't awful. 
thought it was fine. I, I my I issue didn't even with the, mind it's I don't even fully movie. understand what they're like referring to like as the badass comic version because I'm like that's not you can't translate that. Like um yeah, let's see. It's not even it doesn't even say like the comic version. It doesn't even say. Um these are just it's an excuse to talk about fight scenes they didn't like. Wolverine versus Deadpool from yeah. X Men Origins. We didn't even watch this movie, so who cares? All right, uh, Tomb Raider sequel scrapped after MGM loses franchise rights. Reboot with new star officially. Oh, uh, I liked Alicia yeah. Vikander. That's a that's a shame. I liked her. <sighs> yeah, I did too. I don't know, like, the, her movie wasn't bad. I don't know what you think you're gonna redo that's gonna be better. You might as well keep her if you're gonna do another one. Um. Uh, some people said so. There is a bidding war. She's not Vikanda, isn't it? Vikander is yeah, no longer attached Vikander. to the property. Um, the rights have reverted to video game pub- publisher Crystal Dynamics, and they're looking for a new home for the movie franchise alongside Graham King's GK Films. Oh boy, um, I, I, I can't wait for that people, reboot where she becomes the Tomb Raider again. I think a lot of people are fine with Alicia Vikander. They should keep her, even if it is like a new studio or whatever. Um, struggling to make the sequel a reality with Ben Wheatley departing the project. Uh, Sharon and Misha Green came on board to write and direct. Both versions never came to fruition. Embracer acquired Crystal Dynamics earlier this year for $300 million, and the quarterly report noted that the company sees great potential not only in sequels, but also in remakes, remasters, spinoffs, <laughs> as well as transmedia projects. God, that sounds terrible. Um, People were saying that like Sony should buy it and do an Uncharted. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. That's like, actually I feel the like only thing I think I want to see. You could do a crossover, like. Yeah. She's a little like older a, than Tom Holland, though. A video game cinematic universe. Fantastic Four: Ten Things We Have to See When Marvel's First Family Is Rebooted in 2024. Uh, classic comic book costumes. I don't. I don't care. So yeah, Sue Storm, the team's most powerful member. Okay. okay, she Did, might be. I, I saw something. I, I don't know if it's true. Force I saw fields. something that people are considering. Uh, what's her face? And they want Amber Heard as Invisible Woman. Nobody's saying that. Nobody's I don't think, considering no, that. Nobody either. important is saying that. I've seen. I've seen stuff on Reddit for it. A true family dynamic. Eh, okay. I don't really want to see that. I think they're gonna have to go with a younger. Um, who's the guy? Johnny Storm. Mm. Galactus. Uh, is that the Death Star in the back? I think he's pretty stupid, to be quite honest with you. This giant guy who like walks around. Um, yeah, who eats the planet? I don't know. I don't know that he needs to be in there in the first one. The negative zone. Yeah, we should probably see the negative zone. Mm-hmm. Some sort of X Men tie in. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that's going to happen anyway, at some point. Herbie. Who the fuck is Herbie? That based on that picture, I'm gonna do a hard pass. Humanoid experimental robot B type, integrated that, electronics. That thing looks a like a Furby without the skin on it. Robotic ally to the Fantastic Four, who sometimes guards the Baxter Building, assists Mister Fantastic, or babysits Reed and Sue's son Franklin. All right, whatever. Getting the ring right. The, the thing. thing. Oh, the thing. He <laughs> <laughs> is being corrupted by the ring. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. Um, I thought the 2015 version was fine. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what else. Like, I also thought that the other version was fine too. Like, looked fine. I'm just talking about appearance. He's going to be CGI for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, no more love triangles. I mean, I agree with that just on the base. I don't remember who the love triangle was before. Ben Grimm <laughs> looks like the thing, bro. Victor Von Du. Is that the thing right there? Is that supposed to be the thing, or is that Johnny Storm? No, that's definitely Johnny, Johnny Storm. Storm. Okay. Yeah, the real Doctor Doom. <sighs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, whatever. We're gonna see him in Wakanda forever. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom rumor points to Ben Affleck's Batman replacing Michael Keaton's Dark Knight. Well, I didn't know weird. Michael Pete Keaton's Dark Knight was in there. What? 
Yeah, ba- Ben Affleck will return as Batman in Aquaman. I, I knew that, but when the fuck was Michael Keaton going to be in there? I don't know. Um, Wait, according- they're saying that, that movie is going to create the extended universe. It looks like they're replacing the Michael Keaton scenes with Affleck. Remember, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom was originally supposed to come out after The Flash and audiences were confused by his inclusion. I didn't think uh, they were actually replacing him. Well, it makes sense because there isn't a, a multiverse yet if this movie comes out first. So, like, why would Michael Keaton be in it? But that's really funny. What a fucking wow. mess. But, what but, a mess. I don't think I, – I didn't realize Keaton was, like, going to be Batman and everything now. I think he's too old for that. They, but he is going to be Batman. <laughs> that's so stupid. That is wild. He was going to be the new Batman. They had, oh, my God. They're dead on arrival. Wow. Um, I listen, I'm glad Keaton's doing it, but it's probably not gonna be good. At this point, I just want an action figure. I mean, I, I don't care if I don't even actually see it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh and or story detail reveals shows connection to the Death Star. Um Project Stardust is reportedly referenced. Okay, that's probably the whole article. <laughs> From WandaVision to Miss Marvel, ranking every okay. MCU Disney Plus yeah, series. This is good. All right. So sure. I think I think WandaVision should be below Falcon and Winter Soldier. No, 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 no. Falcon and the Winter Soldier is really bad. It is, but WandaVision, nothing happens. The first episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier is not bad. It 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 does. <sighs> things do happen. Like I think that the finale isn't terrible for WandaVision. It's okay. Like they accomplish, like she uses the runes, she tricks Agatha, she certifies herself as a witch. I'm not saying it's great or what they should have done, but it's something does happen. Falcon and the Winter Soldier is literally trash. Read the critic consensus. Packed with blockbuster action and deft character beats. Falcon and the Winter Soldier proves itself to be proves itself worthy of Captain America's legacy. No. With its globe-trotting intrigue, mature social commentary, and the sparky rapport between stars Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan. It's so awful. How can anyone write that with a good conscience? It's 83% fresh and it's listed as the worst. Like, oh my God, what a terrible show. Like, I regret even watching it. Every second I spent watching it. Yeah. Moon Knight. I think Moon Knight was better than WandaVision. I still haven't watched Moon Knight. So I, don't I hated know. Moon Knight. I really hated Moon Knight. I think it was, there were like three episodes of like, all right, I don't know, this could be interesting. And then it like, it had one episode, the first episode, where you're like, where is this going? And then, uh, honestly, I don't know. Maybe Moon Knight should be behind Falcon. I don't know. Okay, WandaVision. I'm glad this isn't number one, because that's where I thought this list was heading. Mm. Um, all three of these have been terrible so far. Yeah, WandaVision. Was Hawkeye is great. tied for third. Hawkeye is... I, I can't even call it better. Like, they're just bad. So Hawkeye is tied 92%, with Loki. Wow. Loki's Loki better, is than, better Hawkeye. than everything so far. Yeah. So Loki is so far number one. I don't even know what the next two will be. I can't remember. Um, what if and... Oh, what if should be way down the list. That was stupid. Loki's definitely better than what if. And then Miss Marvel... I guess you could say it's number one. Like at least it had some type of story. I liked Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel and Loki and the rest are tied for last. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, the Gray Man sequel moving forward with Ryan Gosling at Netflix. Spinoff in the works from Deadpool writers. So I'm guessing that Chris Evans dies. Yes. I mean, if you have Netflix, just check it out. It's literally nonstop action the entire time, but it's decent action. That's the but thing. That's I just I can't imagine myself sitting and watching it for two hours. Turn it on the background as you do something. But don't you have to watch the action then? I mean, you can just look up and be like, "Oh, that's sick." And then look back down. <laughs> Turn your brain off. Directors recall John Favreau, uh, Favreau objecting to them deciding to kill Iron Man. Part of the pressure came from John Favreau, who called us up after he read the script, and he said to us, are you guys really going to kill Iron Man? 
I remember pacing on the corner of a stage on the phone with Favreau trying to talk him off a ledge because he's like, you can't do this. It's going to devastate people. And you don't want them, you know, walking out of the theater and into traffic. Didn't, uh, when you sent us that article earlier in the week, didn't you call him a coward for not wanting them to die? This is such bullshit. People are going to walk into traffic. Who are they talking about? Like little children whose minds would be blown. Or fanboys that are never going to see Iron Man again. Everybody was basically like, all right, somebody's going to die. Somebody has to die. Like one of the big ones for sure have to go. Like this cannot go on like this forever. Somebody big is going to die. We all pretty much knew that. Why can't you kill off a character? Why can't you give it a character an ending? Why is that so wrong? I mean, this is bullshit. Yeah, I hate, I hate this shit. Like, you know, people are gonna walk into traffic if you kill a beloved character. Like, same thing with Harry Potter. Wasn't he supposed to die in the seventh book? I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, I think he was. Secret Invasion. New rumor points to Olivia Coleman playing. Let's see, a version of Union Jack. What the fuck is Union Jack? Oh yeah. Um. Are we going to talk about all the, the trailer leaks from Comic-Con? No, not really. Oh, okay. They're, they're not great. They're, I've seen the footage, like baby rocket. Like, I don't know. What do you want to talk about? You can barely see yeah, anything. Just... The audio is terrible. Okay. Just we'll checking. just wait for them to release it. Um, yeah. Anyway, I don't care. Like Union Jack. I really don't give a fuck at this point. <laughs> I, I don't even know that I'm going to watch it. Like, honestly. I'm trying to think, like, we, we still have to watch Fantastic Four, so I'm like, should I just cancel Disney Plus now or and get it back when we watch Fantastic Four? I really don't know, because I feel like I won't be saving myself a month if we're going to be watching it in, like, three weeks. Mm-hmm. Spider-Man freshman year producer explains exactly how the animated series... It doesn't. ...the MCU. <laughs> it doesn't. It follows the pattern you see in Captain America Civil War, down to Peter getting the broken Blu-ray player from the trash, and he walks into his apartment for the famous moment where Tony Stark is waiting for him to offer him the Stark internship. But because of things that happen in the multiverse, because of new random occurrences, it's not Tony Stark who's waiting for him there. It's Norman Osborn that sends his life in an unexpected trajectory that collides with him. So it's, him with many unexpected yeah, so it's not. It's fucking what if, yeah. basically. It's the what if. Um, it's already been confirmed after this launches in 2024. We're getting a second season titled Spider-Man sophomore year. Wow. Jesus. Kevin Feige explains six-year wait for new Avengers movies. They should be the capper to a saga. Was was uh, Age of Ultron a capper to a saga? No. Truth is, when we were doing phase one, phase two, and phase three, there were less projects over more years. There were smaller projects and individual character stories, and it felt appropriate at that point that after every two, three years that it took for a phase, we would do an Avengers film. As phase four, five, and six were coming together, there are more projects in less years because of all the amazing stuff we're now allowed to do on Disney Plus and getting characters from Fox, Fantastic Four, and Deadpool, that it felt certainly after Infinity War and Endgame that we thought Avengers movies aren't cappers. So many of our movies now, Multiverse of Madness and what you're about to see in Ant-Man and The Wasp, Quantumania, are all big team-up films introducing big parts of the mythology. Avengers films really should be a capper to the saga. I actually think he might have a point, um, except that what is phase four? Nothing, it, apparently. It's like supposed to be the aftermath of, of Endgame. They haven't even done a single story that went that occurred during the blip. Mm-hmm. Like That's what Shang-Chi should have been. We haven't even explored the blip at all. And phase four is already over. Just crap. Avengers, the King Dynasty director, Destin Daniel Cretton, reportedly won't helm Avengers Secret Wars. Good. I under, I don't understand why they picked him. No. The movies yeah, no won't idea. shoot back to back. Different filmmakers. Yeah. I, I don't whatever. Know. I'm kind of, I think I'm kind of losing my luster for a lot of this stuff anyway. Don't care. Uh, Kevin Feige confirms that upcoming MCU reboot of Fantastic Four will not be an origin story. I mean, of course it's going to be. <laughs> a lot of people know this origin story. A lot of people know the basics. How do we take that and bring something that they've never seen before? 
we've set a very high bar for ourselves with bringing that to the screen. I'll tell you what you do. You insert a lot of one-liner jokes. Wonderful. I mean, I think you need to do some type of origin story to say like where they've been or like how they fit into the MCU. Um, more details on why we may not see the MCU reboot until 2025, X-Men have come to light. Uh, let me see if this is what I did, what I read. Um, so originally, they thought it was the actors, like their contracts did not allow mm-hmm. for another movie until 2025 unless you use the same actors. But it also seems like the producers are part of it too. So like Simon Kimberg, Brian Singer would have to be at the minimum entitled to credits and compensation and may even have some degree of creative control. So they're basically waiting until it's a complete clean break. I mean, it's probably the right choice. Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 director James Gunn reiterates Love and Thunder didn't impact the Guardians. Because the Guardians were barely in it. Yeah, why would anyone Had think no that impact. they were? No, I wrote the script without ever thinking that they were ever going to be with Thor. <laughs> I mean, it's weird that they just don't talk to each other. John Krasinski comments on possible MCU return after Doctor Strange sequel cameo. Uh, they just announced Fantastic Four. Yes. You're not allowed to say anything. Nope. I'm not allowed to really ask you. That's right. But you think, you think, you think. Seriously, what have you heard? I need to know. They don't tell you anything. That's right. Oh. Um, yeah. So they, this is nothing. Okay. Yeah. There's no it's director. Just... I don't actually think that he's like in yet. There's no director. They need to wait until I find a director. I saw this. Uh, Marvel Studios now accused of overworking, underpaying, and being infamously awful to VFX artists. I believe it. Yeah, they said they are said to underpay and overwork, have no idea what they want, demand endless last-minute revisions, and will blacklist anyone who comes up short. They'll be like, can you just try this? Can you just try that? They'll want you to change an entire setting, an entire environment pretty late in a movie. I've had coworkers sit next to me, break down, and start crying. I've had people having anxiety attacks on the phone. Wow. Yeah, it's because they don't talk to each other. He, it's yeah, Kevin but Feige's can, fault. Yeah, and can you fucking imagine your VFX artist? Like, you're basically almost done. They call you up. Okay, we're changing this entire scene, and you need to do it. And if you, like, fuck it up, they're like, all right, you're never working with us ever again. Like, that's awful. It's because he has a different character, director for each movie. They're each doing their own individual thing. They're revising and then somebody fucks up the continuity and then late stage you have to change something else to like work something else. Kevin Feige, his problem, you know, what, give him whatever credit you want, but he's not a writer. And so mm-hmm. he's making plans, but he's not doing the writing. And so other people are doing the writing and changing things. And that's why they don't talk to each other. Kevin Feige should be the writer on basically every single one of these movies. He He's in full control. He doesn't you at this point he shouldn't need more than like a month to come up with a good script and then have somebody else punch it up like he could come up if he could write he probably can't do it so he gives it up to the individual project which is fucking everything up timeline wise and that's why you get bad movies that come out and it's like Dude, didn't you know that this was stupid it's like no he doesn't know because he's not a writer Kevin Feige comments on Barbie star Ryan Gosling reportedly wanting to play I'm guessing he's going to be like that could be super interesting Hey man, if Ryan wants to be Ghost Rider, what else? Who else? Gosling's unbelievable. Ryan's amazing. I'd love to find a place for him in the MCU. He's dressed up as Ken on Venice Beach and gets more press than a giant movie that's coming out that weekend. It's amazing. Uh, I don't know if I'd cast him as Ghost Rider, but whatever. Who gives a fuck? It's just going to be some shitty story anyway. Thor 11 Thunder concept art reveals Lady Sif once had a much bigger role. Wow, she, she wasn't just meant to lay there and do nothing. Unused concepts. I worked on the set under the guidance of Nigel Phelps early in production. The set was to be shot using the volume. That's that weird dome thing. So much of my time was spent doing basic 3D layouts using the volume model before painting these up. Uh, looks like her like walking in caves. She looks like a Jedi. The magical place. Yeah. That's actually really true. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever stars Letitia Wright and Lupita Nyong'o on... Oh. Stars play coy on new Black Panther's identity. It's obviously Shuri. Somebody pointed out that she has like the the panther head. Remember her last uh thing had like Panther her black sonic gauntlets. Yeah. 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 So that's probably a pretty good clue. I don't know what you're talking about. 
But November 11, you get your ticket. Don't you just love a good secret? Whatever, it's not a secret. Um, Black Adam star Dwayne Johnson calls Henry Cavill the Superman of our generation. Um, um, we haven't seen him in a apparently generation. Apparently at Comic-Con, he got yeah. booed because he said uh, he didn't know who was playing Superman. <laughs> That's fucking <laughs> hilarious. really funny. Um, I wonder if this... I think uh, it might start up at the top. Here. Like above that, above that, because um, he said the outcome of a fight between Black Adam and Superman would depend on who's playing the latter. Yeah, he got booed when he said that. And nobody, they're not reporting that, but that's um, funny. Yeah, I think that they don't know. And I, I don't even care, if I'm being honest. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Namor's Breakdown reveals a Submariner's underwater nation. Um, I'd like to see. I thought there was going to be a breakdown. Okay. Um, you guys heard the para, the Aztec word for paradise heaven is Lalocan. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce and it. They, yeah, they're no. changing it to Talocan, which is just T A L O C A N. Oh, here. Okay. Talocan. Okay. Uh, I'm stoked for that. And, and the quality of this trailer, to be fair, even if it ends up being like a bad movie because of the whole. You right thing, you could tell like this is like a step above your normal shit. Yeah, that you see in the MCU. I'm not mm-hmm. guaranteeing that it's going to be good, but I think that like there's going to be something to like be interested in. And and I'm I'm really just going for Namor at this point. I, I I'm actually not that interested in Shuri as Black Panther. Mm. Um, Young Avengers and Arrow's plans teased by Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige following Comic Con panel. God, this was so bad. This this guy, I don't know what is his name. Star Star something. Hey, I'm the brother of Thanos. Star Thief. Star. We've got. Thief. We're sort of reminding people of all the amazing characters that we have introduced in Phase Four. Because <laughs> no one remembers. Remember the it's dwarf. Where those characters go. Was? What is what? What was his name? I know it's Eros, but like he had some star douche name or something. Star um, Fox. Star Fox, yeah. The yeah, adventures Jesus. of Eros and Pip is something that is very exciting for us. Wow. <laughs> wow. I, really? I don't even care. I don't even care. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know what to think anymore, guys. I think it's all stupid as shit. Eight quite, Marvel honestly. comic events that could still be adapted. Have we done this already? Norman Osborn in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, let's just skim through it. Secret Empire, we've seen that. Annihilation, we've seen that. House of M, yeah, Avengers of X Men, War of the Realms. I no chance it happens. Thor should die in his next appearance. There, I said it. World War Hulk, well, that was never going to happen. Secret Wars. Secret Wars is already happening. So, all right, Everett, do you have a game? Um, I don't, but I'm preparing a big one for the end when we do the final Lord of the Rings movie. So I'm going to do one that covers all three films at once. Okay, you we know have I'm like not going to know any episodes of the answer. left. Just, just trust me. What did you say, Emerson? We only have like twelve episodes left. The end score is going to be like under thirty. Yeah, this. I'm going to find ways to give you guys more points. Don't well, worry. Well, just... I just, I'm not going to know. <laughs> Are you going to do the thing where it's a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, but they're only worth one point each? No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. You'll see. I'll figure it out. But he's okay. going to go confer with the skeleton. Gonna come up with the fucking I'll bring that in for the next podcast episode. I'll stick it in the back. Oh God, no. Uh, I don't make sure see you the wipe stickers. it down before you bring it on camera. Yeah, I'll have it talk to you instead of me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'd like to see that. I, I like yeah. To see. Like, Everett's screen is black. We're, like, getting ready. It turns on the skeleton's just there. This is that is cool, guys. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll, we'll we'll be back next week with the two towers, the twin towers. No, it's the two towers, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm making okay. another right. joke. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.